So kind of moving on from spring, you know, we covered a lot of ground there as far as, you know, where those fish are, how to look for them, presentations, all that good stuff. Um, now it comes early summer, a very different time of year. We're generally talking about water temps from 55 to 65 and where I'm at in northern Wisconsin, northern Minnesota, this is generally your late May um, into the June, like late June period, I would say. We call this kind of the early summer. And this is the start of the progression from fish from shoreline structure to basin oriented fish. These fish were up on the shoreline. This is the same progression that fish in every single lake go through and system, right? Generally it's early spring, those fish are on a shoreline. They progressively kind of push out to more basin, deeper structure, and then they kind of come back in the fall a lot of times. And this is kind of the start of those fish moving offshore, right? At this time of year, another thing to think about is that weeds are beginning to grow and hold a lot of life, right? From this um, late May into June period. It's kind of the start of weed bites getting good, right? And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit here. So as you see here in red, we have highlighted this big shallow water flat. Now this would be the kind of stuff that fish are spawning on this, you know, in the early season, right? This is like your primary piece of structure. Now, as fish, as the water warms up in early summer, these fish have a tendency to kind of start pushing out onto this stuff, right? This is still your primary piece of structure, but you're kind of at that first break line, right? And the first break off of primary structures, normally we're targeting these fish this time of year. In most of the lakes I fish, I would say that is um, 10 to 20 feet of water, give or take a few feet. You know, right in there is kind of that late May to June depth that we're fishing. Now, the piece of structure might be a point extension, um, a big hump complex, or a big flat. All these spots can be players, it more depends on what we're exactly looking for. So here's another image right here, and what are we really looking for? We're looking for weeds, rock, and just life in general, right? Um, you know, this is a time of year where fish are, all kinds of fish are really feeding. They just came out to spawn, the water's warming, metabolism's ramping up, fish are going, right? And uh, bites are normally good. So here we have a big shallow water flat, and you can see what, kind of where I've dropped these, uh, the walleye marks here, are kind of like your little points coming off of this. You know, a lot of times you can kind of look at GPS and kind of say, well, you know, it doesn't look that good right here, but here we have this little point flat coming out. Here we have another little point. Here we have a little point with an inside turn, and here we kind of have a point. All of it is next to very deep water. So we can kind of start looking, and this green area, this 10 to 20, is generally where I'm looking for walleyes this time of year. And so once we found these kind of areas, you know, how are we going about looking for fish and structure in these areas? <clears throat> and like I said, generally we're talking about that 10 to 20 foot zone this time of year. In these depths, sonar and down imaging start to come into play, but side imaging is absolutely the best for looking for fish in weeds or on a lot of these larger flats. So you can see from the picture here, we have a very thick stand of weeds that runs like this here. I kind of drove right over the weeds, as you can see by the boat line. Here's kind of the outside of the weeds, the weed edge. Now here's all my walleyes sitting right on that weed edge. They're actually just off the weeds. And this is a side imaging shot you would never get an image that looks anything remotely close to this on down imaging or sonar. And this is why side imaging is such a killer when you're fishing these bigger flats or weed edges or things like that. So here's another image here, which is basically an early summer location. Here we have another thick stand of weeds over here. Sand off the break. And then right on the side of this weeds, as walleyes often do, they set up just like that. So you can imagine that thick stand of weeds like this, and right next to it, are those walleyes kind of tucked right into that seam. And that's an image that we see a lot um, fishing up here in Northern Wisconsin and really anywhere where we're fishing weeds this time of year. The other one is rock. You know, rock does definitely become a player this time of year. Here we have a little 15, 14 foot rock rise. You could tell it's rock uh, by down imaging and sonar. This is one of the reasons I love running both those two right next to each other, split screen into or down, down imaging and sonar is because you can see here on sonar, yeah, you can see fish, can't really tell what the bottom is. You flip it over to down imaging and you can literally count the fish and you can see that it's definitely good rock on this spot, right? So this time of year, 15 feet, this is definitely the kind of spot you're looking for. And if you see all these fish here, it's obviously what you're looking for. So early summer presentations, some of them are the same as the spring, but we definitely get into some different stuff and some different ways to fish. One of my absolute favorites all year long is the Kalen's Jerk Minnow Jr. It's just a very versatile plastic. There's very few plastics that you can do as much with as you can a basically a minnow or fluke profile like this one here. And then in the early summer period, a lot of times we're fishing that at one quarter 
if we're fishing kind of like that 12 and shallower zone, if we're fishing a little bit deeper, I'll go three eighths sometimes. And here's kind of how we're fishing at this time of year. All right, guys, so real quick here, you know, I know I've talked about this before, the Kalen's Jerk Minnow Jr., one of my absolute favorite plastics to fish in clear water like this. It's super erratic. You can pop it fast. You can pop it short. You can get this bait to do a lot of different stuff. So we're fishing on a quarter ounce head because we're not fishing very deep. I mean, basically 10, 11 feet of water. And what we're doing, we're only casting right where we pretty much know fish are, and uh, we're letting that bait get out there, letting it touch bottom. Once we're on bottom, pop, real hard pop. Hang the rod up high, let it hit bottom again. You're not going to feel it hit bottom, but you'll see it in the line when it hits bottom, when the line goes slack. Once you get the cadence down, because we're fishing these big flats, it's easy to get the timing down. You don't really even have to watch for it to hit bottom. Those fish, like we talked about, they just freight train that thing on the way down. You'll pop it up, bait will be falling, the line will just go boom real hard. Then obviously just jam them on the hook set. It's on just smoke that thing. There's nothing better than pop jigging and just feeling that line go boom on the way down. <laughs> Not a giant here, but another nice Hayward area, Walter, middle of the day. We could literally, I was just telling Mitch, you could see the bottom where we're fishing. Super clear water, but these fish are obviously up here and they're obviously chomping. Smoke that thing. It's right where you get them. So that is how we're working that this time of year in this early summer period. You can tell it's much more aggressive than it was when the water was very cold in the spring. And a lot of times I'll fish that on rock or weeds. Now the next early summer presentation that we fish a lot of is a spinner rig. Now a lot of guys are probably familiar with trolling spinner rigs on a bunch of boards. This time of year is a little bit different. These fish are generally set up very shallow around either thick cover, um, sometimes rock, but a lot of times I'm using this it's in weed relating areas right and a lot of times in this june period late may period the wind the weeds are still kind of fringy you know they're not all the way up to the surface yet and a lot of times i'm fishing this in like 8 to 14 15 feet of water and i'm doing it on a spinning rod with braid so i can feel everything basically my setup i'm fishing a single <clears throat> hooked harness and i like to put a leech on there a lot of times there's so many bluegills and perch and crappies in the weeds that if you're fishing a night crawler it just gets picked off too fast that leech stays on much better and also with fishing that single hook rig, um, it keeps, it's actually a very weedless setup somehow. And then basically all I do is I run that three foot lead and I peg a uh, quarter ounce bullet weight right up above that, um, right on my braid. And uh, this is basically the setup. And it's a lot of manipulating this as you're gonna see in the video. So I'll kind of show you guys the video here um, of basically how we do this. It's an absolutely killer way to fish this time of year. And uh, basically you're just running the trolling motor right through that fringe weed edge. Um, or right where you think those fish are. Now I'm fishing a lot of this eight to kind of 12 foot stuff, right? So I'm just kind of lobbing it back there and I'll just kind of let it down to the bottom basically, right? Once I'm on the bottom, which doesn't take too terribly long, I'll do a lot of like rod kind of slow pumping like this to kind of find where I'm at bottom. You know, I don't want to be constantly dragging bottom because obviously it's just going to be too low. I'm going to get too many weeds and that kind of stuff. So a lot of times what I want, I want to be able to hold my rod right here, kind of in front of me with my forward arm. And when I drop it all the way back, I want to be able to touch bottom just barely with that weight. And then I'll pull it back forward to fish it. That way I know I'm probably, you know, within two or three feet of the bottom or so. Now if I keep hitting bottom like over and over, I'm getting a lot of weeds. I'll basically just take another real turn in. You know, or if when I drop my rod back, I'm not hitting bottom, I'll just basically let some line out, keep going and start over again. The speed I'm running is pretty much one, two to, you know, one, four, one, five. Um, speed's not super important when you're doing this. You know, you're doing a lot of turning because I'm kind of following that specific edge where I think the fish are. Um, so, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're never just holding your rod here. A lot of times you'll be reeling in a whole bunch of line and you'll kind of come off the brake a little bit or, you know, you'll end up going faster and you'll drop some line out, you know, drop it back, make sure you're on bottom again. So it's a lot of manipulating where your bait's at and what it's doing with your rod. And you know, a lot of times I'll just kind of pull it forward real slow to make sure that you can still feel that blade hammering away. And then the important part is, you know, if, if you get a bite, once you feel a bite, most of the time it'll be initial boop, you'll feel a line tick, and then it'll just start kind of slowly going back. And what you don't want to do is the second you feel that boom, just turn around and reef into the fish. Basically when you feel that bite, like you'll see in a lot of the clips, 
basically what I do is I just drop my rod back real slow until it's right about here and that fish is, just let that fish load up on the bait and then it's just kind of a big sweep forward. So many different stuff doing this, it's just kind of a crap shoot every time. But I think we have the right fish on. Big and hard. Oh yeah. Another perfect weed walleye. All day long like that one. So that's kind of how I pull spinners by hand like this. It's very different than how we do it in the summer, but it is an incredibly effective way um, to fish this time of year, especially when you're targeting these large flats or large weedy brake lines, right? And this is also the time of year um, where one of my favorite presentations starts really getting good, and that is slip bobber fishing. Now this is not power slip bobber fishing. Um, we're kind of getting on a good spot and we're fishing slip bobbers. This is definitely leech season, this May and June period. Um, we're using almost, we're always using leeches this time of year on our slip bobbers. You can kind of see how I rig this up here. I get a lot of questions on this. Um, basically I'm fishing a live bait jig on the bottom. A Northland Fireball is a good example. Generally a two to three foot lead. I'm running an eighth ounce um, weight, normally an egg weight, right in there between the swivel and the bobber, and then a quarter or three eighth ounce thill wobble bobber. Um, and that's kind of the setup here. You guys have probably seen me fish a lot of slip bobbers if you're familiar with my content, but here's kind of video how we're doing it this time of year. You know, this time of year, it's still uh, early June. Now we don't have fish real deep, so I'm not gonna try to drive over fish in 10, 12 feet of water and see them on my sonar and then fish, because those fish are gonna be much tighter to the bottom. The deeper the water fish are in, the higher they'll tend to sit out bottom, typically. So this time of year, we're picking good spots. We're fishing both weed edges and a lot of rock. A lot of rock kind of in that, I would say eight to 15 foot range. And we're kind of looking for the best spot on the spot, right? We're dropping waypoints and then coming back later. We're spot locking upwind and throwing our slip bobbers back to them. And we're not just sitting here and letting our slip bobbers soak in the same spot over and over. This is called combat slip bobbering. And this is you're constantly reeling stuff in, casting out, doing different angles, letting the bait drift different ways, covering a ton of water with a slip bobber kind of in the same area. You know, I don't think we're going to throw our leech in front of a whole lot of fish today that aren't going to bite. So it's not so much of an issue as, uh, um, you know, just waiting for that fish to bite, right? We got, you know, we got a nice, beautiful, clear day out here and they're still going to choke that leech down. All right, guys, we are hooked up. Another fish on. You know, running this slip bobber pattern, it's super, super fun. You know, I don't, <laughs> I fish walleyes a million different ways, but for some reason, it just never, ever gets old catching them on a slip bobber. Not a big one here, nice northern Wisconsin eater, but we'll take them like that all day. Gin clear water, and uh, it's just a cool way to fish for sure, you know. So that's kind of the slip bobber deal. Like I said, you know, basically the premise of this, kind, this type of year, what we're doing is we're either side imaging a spot, picking out some of that really good rock in that 10 to 15 foot zone and we're casting back onto it or if those fish are deep enough we might drive over them see them on the graph spot lock up wind and pitch back to them um, so this is not really power slip bobbering because we don't want to be constantly driving over fish in 10 12 15 feet of water we want to be off those fish casting back to them and most of the time i'll have three four five rods just kind of going at the same time and kind of cast them out at different angles letting them kind of swing back grab the back ones cast them back out and just kind of keep letting those bobbers work through that zone so those are kind of the best um, three, or at least what I use the most in that early summer time frame as far as uh, presentation goes. 